Not all of us are like that lucky 1% we just saw who invested in Bitcoin at the right time. The rest of us live with the guilt of not buying into the hype before it got all oversaturated. But there is a silver lining. The illicit drug trade has long been associated with money laundering. It's a process that allows criminals to disguise the origin of their dirty money and make it look like it was earned ethically. In the last decade, the rise of cryptocurrencies, particularly the most famous crypto Bitcoin, has provided drug dealers and gangsters with new avenues for concealing and legitimizing their illicit proceeds. It may come as a surprise that a substantial number of both ordinary individuals and celebrities engage in money laundering on behalf of drug cartels and criminal organizations, all in exchange for a share of the proceeds, or worse, they do it in exchange for a temporary free funding of their habit. It's actually very sad. Most recently, New Zealand radio host Nate Noah was jailed for laundering money for the common Cheros. Noah confessed to laundering a staggering 420 grand of drug money linked to the common Chero gang through a series of transactions involving the purchase of luxury vehicles using cash, as well as getting calf implants. Unsurprisingly, Noah's attempts to evade detection were short-lived, as flaunting a lavish Kylie Jenner lookalike Mercedes G-Wagon while earning an average wage was bound to attract the wrong attention. According to sources, Nate has now officially been patched in prison recently with the Comancheros, and there was speculation about whether or not the government was going to order his calf implants to be removed, seeing as he paid for them with dirty money. But shockingly enough, he gets to keep them. Now personally, I don't know about you guys, but I would be humiliated if I only went to prison for laundering 400 grand. But you know, it's crazy what people will do for a Mercedes G-Wagon these days and calf implants. So today we're actually going to be going the extra mile, seeing what it actually takes to be a successful money launderer in this day and age, and we're going to be looking at the people out there who aren't getting caught, who are utilising crypto to their advantage to wash their dirty money. It's actually a lot easier than it sounds, but you've got to remember, risk reward. I fucking quit. And apparently it was a hell of a lot easier to launder money through Bitcoin like 5 or 10 years ago, and we'll be investigating just why that is. There is more money here than we could spend in 10 lifetimes. So how easy is it? Law enforcement officials have identified cryptocurrencies as one of the biggest emerging threats in organized crime. Cryptocurrency is no longer seen as an option, but a standard part of the money laundering tool. Due to Bitcoin's decentralized structure and the ability to do anonymous transactions, Bitcoin has become a popular tool for drug dealers looking to reroute money that they have earned illegally. Drug dealers can take advantage of the perceived anonymity of cryptocurrency transactions by using Bitcoin, which makes it more difficult for law enforcement to track the movement of money and identify the people engaged in unlawful activity. Drug dealers frequently use crypto mixing services and coin tumblers to conceal the link between Bitcoin sales and drug proceeds. These services mix up transactions from several sources, making it challenging to determine where the money came from. The distinction between legal and illegal Bitcoin transactions is effectively blurred by coin tumblers and mixing services, making it difficult for law authorities to follow the money laundering trail. Peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin exchanges and darknet markets are regularly used by drug dealers to enable money laundering. Direct transactions between people are made possible by peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, which skew the use of conventional financial institutions that might be subject to government scrutiny. I always got time for my fucking government. Darknet markets act as venues for buying and selling illegal narcotics using cryptocurrencies and are only accessible through anonymizing software like Tor. Drug traffickers might exchange their illegal funds for Bitcoin through these networks, significantly complicating the tracking procedure. 
Dealers also use other cryptocurrencies, also known as altcoins, in addition to Bitcoin, which is still the most well-known cryptocurrency. An altcoin, short for alternative coin, refers to any cryptocurrency other than Bitcoin. Altcoins encompass a wide range of digital currencies that have been developed as alternatives to Bitcoin or with specific features and purposes that differentiate them from the original cryptocurrency. Examples of popular altcoins include Ethereum, Ripple, Litecoin and many others. Altcoins provide diversification within the cryptocurrency market. Drug dealers weave a complicated web by turning their Bitcoin into altcoins and vice versa, which makes it difficult for law authorities to track them down. Now, what obstacles must drug dealers overcome in order to use Bitcoin as a money laundering tool? I feel like we could go wrong with laundering money through Bitcoin as by simply just earning too much. People start to turn their heads when they find out that you've got multi-million dollars worth of Bitcoins and start questioning where did the money come from? How did you get so much in such a short amount of time, especially with it being such a high-risk market? What's this? It's a car. It's a transformer and I spoke to you about conspicuous spending. Send this back. While even multi-millionaire Bitcoin laundering kingpins out there managed to get away with this, and one dude didn't even get caught for like 10 years. In April 2021, the alleged administrator of Bitcoin Fog, a dark web service that anonymized cryptocurrency transactions, was arrested by US authorities after running the operation for a decade. The administrator, identified as Roman Sterlingov, had been charged with laundering hundreds of millions of dollars worth of bitcoins, many of which were linked to dark web drug markets. The IRS discovered Sterlingov's identity by tracing his own digital transactions from 10 years ago. The administrator allowed users to mix their transactions with others to prevent tracking on the bitcoin blockchain, earning commissions of 2 to 2.5 percent. The IRS estimated that Sterlingov profited approximately 8 million in Bitcoin through this service, excluding the significant rise in Bitcoin's value over the past decade. Criminals are currently taking advantage of Bitcoin ATMs. These ATMs offer convenient and mostly anonymous transactions, making them attractive for activities like drug trafficking, money laundering, and various types of fraud. These machines, which are usually found in convenience stores and are owned by private companies, allow customers to easily purchase Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies using cash. The money is then sent to the customer's digital wallet. However, this convenience also makes it easy for fraudsters to exploit the system. Money launderers are using Bitcoin ATMs more and more to clean their illegally acquired money. In the past, they would use banking transfers or remittance services like Western Union or MoneyGram. But now, criminals are telling their accomplices to withdraw money from hacked bank accounts and use it to buy Bitcoin using a Bitcoin ATM. Now there's also something called dark exchanges. Back when crypto first existed, it was super easy to launder money. You get your dirty crypto, deposit it into an exchange and withdraw the cash. Easy. However, today there are regulators that are putting know your customer rules in place and work with authorities to help prevent cyber criminals, making it harder for people to launder money. A way that certain people are overcoming this is by using OTC brokers, which is over-the-counter brokers. In essence, over-the-counter OTC trading involves less stringent know-your-customer regulations, and these brokers connect you with a buyer at a predetermined price. OTC trading facilitates the movement of funds using other people's money, and ultimately the funds are transferred to an exchange for withdrawal. Privacy coins are a type of digital money that tries to keep all transaction information secret. Unlike Bitcoin, where you can see the history of a transaction on a public ledger, privacy coins hide this information. When you send or receive privacy coins, it's hard for other people to know where they're going. An important foundation of the crypto industry is privacy coins. Many who support the aims of the blockchain revolution seek privacy as one of their goals. The most well-known privacy coin is called Monero, also known as XMR, but there are other coins like like Zcash, Dash and Litecoin that also have privacy features, although you can choose to use them or not. Because these cryptocurrencies are harder for authorities to track, they are often favoured by criminals. A study from 2021 found that many hackers who use ransomware now only accept XMR as payment. Privacy coins were created to protect people's privacy online, but they have become controversial because they are sometimes used for money laundering. That's why popular regulated cryptocurrency exchanges like Gemini and Coinbase still don't offer coins like Monero. 
So now we've briefly discussed some logistics, next we have to discuss who exactly would be a prime candidate to help gangs and cartels launder money. A prime candidate would be an individual, preferably self-employed, someone who has gang connections, but also someone who has absolutely zero criminal records, probably someone that already gets paid from cash jobs, and ultimately someone that is not showy-offy. So pretty much just your average Joe. So let me know your guys' thoughts on this tutorial in the comments and if you want to see more like it. And don't forget to subscribe for more juicy, juicy tea. Nobody pop up, nobody keep up.